So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, we're here today to uh, get you an overview of uh, the APA analysis course which we are uh, providing. So, a quick introduction about myself. Uh, I'm, I'm Stephen K. Philip, uh, and I'm a presently a product engineer at Cummins uh, working in USA. Uh, I did my master's in uh, UW Madison, uh, which is on mechanical engineering. So that, that's a uh, brief background I have. Uh, coming to TA, uh, Valid will be your uh, TA uh, for the course. And for the course, uh, it will be for a duration of 12 weeks. So uh, it's going to be classes for uh, both Saturday and Sunday. So we'll actually have around 24 classes. So uh, let me get started. So. Uh, and coming to our daily day-to-day -day life, uh, uh, I, I think most of you have a car or drove a car. So I, I just wanted to uh, give you a, a brief overview of how a mechanical engineer uh, should see things. So uh, taking the whole car, you see there's a lot of parts, a lot of assembly in it. So uh, I just wanted to be so specific, uh, like starting from the top-down approach like taking the whole car and just taking out uh, engine out from here. So let's say we have this uh, engine which is in the uh, in the vehicle. So uh, looking at an engine again, there's a lot and lot of uh, component it has. Uh, I just wanted to again uh, like go deep into it. So you have all these. Uh, uh, counter or piston assembly, all those stuffs which is built in the cylinder engine head. And uh, looking into more minute informations, you, you see all these uh, crankshaft, camshaft, uh, a piston uh, contour, and all assemblies. So, being again go, going a little more down, uh, you see. Uh, the day-to-day -day life which we see, which is a uh, bolt nut assembly, a spanner, a uh, sprocket, all those stuff. So it's all these small stuffs, like the bolt, uh, nut, spanner, all the stuffs. And then you let just see the complexity data. So you have all these stuffs, without which you can't do the assembly of a big, big part here. So every small part uh, counts. So uh, that's how, uh, like, as a mechanical engineer, I, I believe we need to see uh, how the perspective of how it is built. So, looking as a whole car and just taking the assembly of the engine, so you, you see there's a lot of things going on. So, like, a lot of component has and a lot of uh, mechanical stuffs going on. So, going to the next one, I just wanted to just uh, show you some. Uh, a quick video on a complexity of how we, uh, how we have engine which is built. So just quick overview. You see how it has the flywheel uh, with the crankshaft. Then you have the flywheel coming in, contour piston assembly, and with all the bolt nuts. Now we have these camshaft coming in, and then you have this gear wheel. Which will be, uh, which will drive the movement of the crankshaft. So, looking as a whole structure, there's a lot in it, and it's it's all minute things. So, you, you just start with the gear again, and then you have these uh, assembly, which is like there's a lot of rotational, translational motion which is going on. So, to or uh, to un understand how it's working, we need we need to have a hands-on experience, and that's what we're trying to do in this course. So to understand how uh, how we can do simulations of of components, uh, like in any mechanical components, and for that you need to have a at least a, a little background of how what the component is and how it is useful. So. Uh, as we go from our class, we we try to take small parts. Uh, let, let's say we have we'll take this gear gear assembly, which, which should be like spur gears. You have all these bolt nut assembly. Just take them out 
uh, do an individual analysis of them, and then let's go to an assembly and try to do all these simulation steps. So uh, that that's one thing I wanted to show you. So it's all all these small small components which is built together to form a big assembly like this. And once you have an assembly like this, you then you can you can put the, put it on your car or your truck. And there's again a lot of things which you have in car. So right now we are just seeing a video of how an engine is built. And and just just think about the uh, complexity it has, each component has. So everything here, even if a bolt or a nut which fails in an engine, it, it's going to be a severe issue. And that is one thing which, as a uh, structural analysis, which you 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 would become like once you finish uh, this course, uh, you, you would understand uh, how uh, how how important uh, uh, doing a FE analysis is. So it's not necessary that we need to have all these prototype uh, run a test uh, to do it. So that that's how our analysis software has helped us to like simplify the process of not building the part, but just uh, like run, running an analysis uh, using uh, 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 all these analysis tools. For our course, we'll be concentrating on uh, ANSYS Workbench. So I, I believe you would now understand uh, the complexity of how an engine is built. So going to a car now, so right now we just saw a single part, which is like this whole engine. Well, and when when you won't have a whole car, just just think about all the mechanism it has, uh, all all the parts component it has. So it's again when you look at all the safety issues when you come come up with the car, you, you have these brake system. So when you look at a brake system, although you have all these big parts, the, all these uh, small bolt nut and all these uh, small components, what which you define the safety of a car coming to an airbag again. It, it's just a mechanism of these steps which would help a safety of safety in a car coming out, coming again to a, a, a security or the lock system we have in a car. Uh, it's, it's, it's all small parts which makes a big difference. And, uh, and, and as an analyst, we need to make sure that each and every small component uh, is is actually worthwhile to put in uh, an, an engine. So, uh, we, we so so the approach I have for this course is not just take a whole whole car or a whole a whole engine component, but just start with a small component, and then understand uh, the background on it and how 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 like small small stuffs like these would fail, and then once we are so. Uh, uh, used to these uh, analysis uh, software will then take uh, more complex uh, geometries and do some uh, advanced uh, FEA uh, simulations. So that's a plan I have for uh, the whole uh, course. So just start with uh, help you get used you used to FE analysis, and then uh, we'll take each uh, a bit complex assemblies do some simulations and uh, help, help you out uh, in being a good structural analysis. So any questions till now, guys? Uh, I just, the, the, just like the background I have, I just want to let you know, like every small thing counts. So, uh, uh, and then help you out uh, uh, on, on how, how we could uh, go forward. So any questions uh, for now, guys? Guys, if you, if you have any particular questions, uh, you can type in the chat box. If you do not have any questions, just say no. Um, if you say no, we will understand you don't have any questions at this point of time. Okay. Uh, uh, you can move ahead, uh, Sibin. Okay. So uh, now, now that we got, uh, now that we know the importance of all small parts, uh, I just wanted to like, go over uh, to the course uh, like what is that we are going to do uh, like what would be the complexity we would start a course with and what would be the complexity uh, as we as we move forward so uh, 
there is something which I did not put in this presentation, which would be your project work. Project work is going to be like, uh, like as we see through the uh, the slides, you would understand like how complex uh, we start. Uh, I mean, how simple we start, and then how complex till we go. And your final project is uh, where uh, like each of you would be. Uh, uh, divided based on uh, the number of people in the course. It's just like you'll have a group or it will be either individual stuff. So as a, a course progresses, uh, we'll talk more on it. So uh, I just want to uh, get started with the next one. Okay, so uh, initially to help you out, uh, get used to this ANSYS uh, software, we would uh, generally start uh, with a simple component. So it's just like uh, taking a metal plate uh, with the whole and as whole. So uh, it, it might look so simple, but that's a lot of stuff. And I think this would be the basic stuff which uh, we need to understand before we move forward of this course. So uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, get you an overview of what we do here. So um let's say we just take a small plate and we just do not have any holes or any stuff so when you're gonna give some loading to it there's definitely some uh, stress but uh it's definitely not the way when we see when the when the play uh when the part has uh, irregularities so looking here you see that there's uh, this hole which is creating a stress concentration so as we give some load on it, you could see uh, like, like as a whole, you could just see the scaling here and the coloring, I would say like blue would be the minimum and red would be the maximum. So just looking at this model, uh, like uh, giving a load to it, you could see that there is some stress uh, developed on one of, uh, on these corners. But on the other side, you, it, it, if you see, uh, this would be on the blue. So uh, there's something more that I need to add here, but uh, I'll make sure that you guys can uh, get used to it and uh, uh, you'll be learning more of uh, the complexity on, on each, each of these models uh, as we go through the uh, course. And I just saw a question uh, from uh, one of the people. So uh, the question was like, what is the direction of force? So here the direction of force is like, we're just giving force on on the right. So uh, looking at this model, we like fixing this part here and just uh, giving uh, positive Y uh, loading. I, I'll quickly uh, look over the other questions. Okay, uh, I had another question like asking, is the assembly done in analysis answers to or just the assembly part? Uh, the good thing in answers is like, uh, we can just start small model and do the analysis. So uh, that can be done. Uh, so, so in most cases, what we do is like, uh, I, like looking as a whole, we have uh, modeling software, analysis software. So, uh, right now we're trying to do analysis. Uh, so, just going back, I'll just talk more on this. Okay, so when you look at these parts, uh, this is. All these parts are like, uh, let's say it's it's modeled in CAD, CAD software, like all these modeling softwares. Uh, what we're trying to do uh, here in ANSYS is uh, to do analysis of these. So it's, I, I don't say that uh, ANSYS can't do it, uh, but I'm saying that there are so specific softwares we have, modeling softwares we have where we can build all these. Uh, initially during a class, I'll just show you how we build it using ANSYS. So just to get help you out, get used to the software. And then uh, th there are more assembly that we could do, but uh, we are not trying, to, uh, let's not time, uh, waste more time on, uh, let's, let's not work more on modeling. 
and what you do like initially for the, let's say for the first uh, three to six weeks let's say uh, you would be do, uh, doing models from the scratch once you get so familiarized with the answers that you're so confident that you could do modeling and answers uh, we'll just take a uh, more complex part just take the assembly and uh, do some analysis on it so that's, that's how uh, i am uh, planning to uh, go forward with this course and uh, sure so we are not able to see your screen just to let you yeah. know so so Sahaj, uh, Sahaj, Vishnu, Aditya, I think you guys are asking the same question. So mostly uh, what Sibin is trying to say is initially we will be doing uh, simple parts on ANSYS and uh, we'll, we will show you how to build it, but that's not the uh, idea of this course. This course is more kind of structural analysis. So initially small, we will take small parts and uh, show you uh, how to get familiarized to the, uh, to the software. Once you do that, probably from week four, we will import components uh, as step files into ANSYS and simulate them. So I, I think uh, you, uh, if that is what you understand, so let, let me know if you have any other questions. Go ahead, Subin. Yeah. And uh, Suryak, uh, as I go over the slides, uh, like, uh, can just, uh, Stop me at times to. Uh, sure, I'll, uh, I'll check the comments and uh, if there is any comments, I'll, I'll let you know. Sure, okay. Thank you. So, uh, this is how we get started. Like, we would uh, initially take a part, like from the scratch, we start modeling and then we would start analyzing. So, uh, uh, just get an idea of modeling and get the basics of analysis initially. But once you get so familiarized, uh, I, as, as, you, as I go over the slides, uh, you would uh, understand the complexity we have. Okay, coming to uh, gears again. So uh, on the initial slides, I, I was talking about the gears. So uh, in this case, like you would start analyzing a spur gear. So uh, just looking here, uh, just looking at a gear, you could see there's a lot of complexity test. So uh, one thing when one thing you look at uh, any model, uh, it's like uh, th that there can be a reason where uh, you can have sharp edges, but uh, when you look at most of the parts, you see there's some uh, curving or you, you generally call it as fillet or radius given to it. So uh, that is something which would which we would learn from uh, stress concentration. So uh, I'm not talking more on it, but just letting you know uh, how how we go oh, as, as a mechanical engineer, we could see things. So looking at this model, okay, that's definitely a hole. And just think thinking about the manufacturing part of it is definitely hard because it has all these uh, teeth coming in and uh, the, the that's when your uh, geometry I mean, like your modeling software comes into play, your GDNT and all steps. So it has to be so accurate. And uh, when you put it into your uh, uh, cam machines, all the steps, it's, we need to make sure uh, a part which is manufactured is uh, so inspected so that there is no flaws on it. So um, I'll talk more on these uh, fillet and the reason why we are not having sharp edges uh, when we talk about the concentration, but uh, just getting you an overview. And now when you look at it, when you try to simulate it, it's, it's again, uh, you need to uh, know your boundary conditions. Boundary conditions is like, you, you need to actually know how the part works or what are the types of load it would have. So in this case, let's say uh, one of these gear would be uh, the parent gear. Uh, let's say that, that that is something which is rotated from some other assembly. Whereas the other teeth, which is just uh, connected to it, would rotate based on it. So uh, in this case, we would actually try to give a uh, rotatory motion. We'll try to say that uh, we'll command uh, saying that this one of the gear would be the parent. Uh, I, I mean, 
that, that would dictate rotation of the other gear and this the other gear would be free to rotate about it as uh, and uh, and then once we look at it uh, on a closer view you could see that once it comes into contacts like each of these gear uh, uh, gear teeth you could see the stress developed on all these teeth one thing you as you look at here is like this gear box i mean i mean this gear would uh, keep running for a while but there is at one point where it is going to definitely fail and that is one thing which we would see uh, during this class or this course like definitely the stress develop whether whether or not the stress develop is going to result in failure we don't know but there is something which each part would have which is called fatigue fatigue is something like as you give repeated loading there's going to be some stress stress developed and at one point your part is going to fail and with answers when you when you try to give all these types of loading to it uh, and uh, there's an option answers where you could know when your part is going to fail so uh, that's one thing you would learn from this uh, uh, this class specifically the, the number of cycles this uh, these gears can take and after which the part was definitely going to fail so answers is something which uh, you could simulate before you, you you even have a prototype of it so that you can know what your what the life of the part is so that's how uh, important and that's the significance of using answers uh, uh, for for analysis so uh, moving forward to the next one um, on the initial slides i was talking about all small things so one uh, major or the one frequent stuff uh, we see in a day to day life when you look at any of the parts you have that that's definitely going to be the uh, bolt nut so looking at it you you won't like uh, think it's uh, like looking at it as just a small part and people people say that what, what is it going to do but uh, as I, as I sh as I showed in the assembly of the engine you see that every bolt nut or every small component uh, uh, is so important that if it's going to fail it's going to be a big issue so uh, like that that's one thing which you would learn uh, so when when we when we actually do this assembly like bolt nut washer assembly so this is actually an assembly uh you, you actually you won't see the nut here but i think when i run the simulations you might see at one point so just looking at a uh, bolt and nut uh it it looks so easy I, as i said you it's like a small part but just looking at the complexity you see you can see that the bolt has a lot of threading in it so designing and um, or, i mean manufacturing stuff like this is something hard and as i said you like uh, here's a, a nut here so even manufacturing a nut is something so uh, uh, time consuming or there is complexity in building this small component and that's because uh, it has all the threading in it and uh, the other one you see here is the washer which is between the bolt and the nut so right now in this simulation what we are trying to do is like just try to give a, uh, let's just think that we are trying to rotate uh, i mean we tighten the bolt so as we tighten the bolt there's going to be stress developed between uh, all these components and uh, that's one thing which you would see uh, in these okay so what i did here was like i i just put the section on this so that you can get a better look on it so that is just looking at the part i would say that as i said you uh, nut again is a uh, manufacturing nut is a, it's not an easy stuff because there's a lot of threading in it the bolt has threading in it and you, see, you can see a washer here here we, we are trying to just tighten uh, the bolt as we tighten you could see that uh, the washer gets compressed and uh, uh, this is just a simulation which we are trying to understand how and uh, the importance of it and moving moving again uh, i just like 
i'm just showing uh, the washer assembly right now just the washer uh, just look at what actually the washer is undergoing so you could see that the bolt is compressing it and you could see the stress developed on it this is when it is in contact with the nut and this is when it's contact on the bolt so there's a lot of things which goes on and now uh, just looking at the bolt assembly as we torque it just see the stress developed on it so as we torque on it you can see that since it's contact with the washer that's the stress developed on it okay and now moving to uh, the nut as we uh, torque or tighten the bolt since it's in contact with the washer you could see that's the stress developed on the contact regions uh, between the, the washer and the, and the nut so as i said you though it is a small part when you when you run this simulation you would actually understand how how hard it is so uh, uh, that that's the one thing which we would do uh, specifically on this uh, stuff and you would definitely understand the importance of a bolt for the washer assembly okay uh, any questions still now uh, i have i have few few more uh, slides which i want to show but as i said you as we move forward with the classes the complexity is definitely going to increase and uh, uh, you you would totally you would, uh, you would understand how complexity complex you would go uh nature of stress is a uh, tensile uh uh like just hold on to your uh, question uh, sahaj uh, so uh, as i start the first class maybe we, we can start talking more about the loading the type of loading the type of stress on it uh, but, but uh, the thang, uh, thanks for the question but uh, definitely uh, like we we will talk more on it uh, I, uh so just hold on to your thought and uh, when we start next week uh, we'll talk more on it so that uh, everyone can have a better understanding on it thanks sahaj okay so uh, going to the next one uh, um, bending so uh, to make it so interesting what i thought was like uh, just take a phone with me. Uh, just taking an iphone or something uh just simulating what we have so let's say we have a phone with us and uh, just trying to simulate what a phone can undergo uh so right now here i try to give a different material to it just to make sure uh, just to uh, just for uh, us to see what's actually going on but it's definitely not the case so that, that's it so with the loading we have so when you look at this mod here you, you can see this uh, four fingers on the top of the uh, back of the mobile and uh, a thumb is giving load uh, to the front face so I, I, uh, so when you look at this uh, i'll just run the simulation so just note that uh, the material i given is a different one and that's why you could see a lot of things going on so here i'm just trying to give load uh, uh, to the top face of the mobile and one thing here an analysis is like right now we know that we physically have a part and we we know where the contact regions would be so in this case as i run it you could see that when there is uh, some color coloring on it it shows that that's where it has contacts to the fingers so when you look at all these fingers uh, with uh, the contact regions uh, uh, that's when it is so when you take more complex part where you, you actually can't see the part or if it's so minute uh, the, that's the option in ansys where you uh, where, where you could see all the contact regions so uh, uh, just wanted to show that on it and right now here is like as i give give loading to it you could see the stress developed i mean the, the deformation on here so as i give the loading this is the deformation we see on uh, uh, on this phone uh, again as i said you the material i given is different just to make sure 
just give, just for you to give you an understanding uh, of what it is. So as we go on, like uh, this, this is just like a practical example. Like we have a phone, giving loading to it is uh, something which is usual we can do. But just think about uh, more complex parts. So as as, uh, as we uh, go, uh, there's different types of loading which we could, uh, which a part can take, and that is what we would try to understand. Uh, so initially we would try to uh, get get a uh, get an application which is uh, something uh, we see in the daily day to day life. As we get a better understanding, we we'll try to give a loading of more complexity and try to uh, uh, run, a, run simulations of it. So uh, that's what we would do uh, in this iPhone winning. And then once we uh, understand this, we'll take more, uh, something like uh, a manufacturing process let's say a building uh, bending a plate or rolling a plate uh, stamping a plate something like that so that uh, you could actually physically uh, you can actually run the manufacturing process something like that it's like simulating a manufacturing process so and that's one thing we, you you guys would be doing like uh, during a class we would st uh, i'll just give you an idea of what's going on and your challenge or your homeworks would be something where you would actually simulate some manufacturing process okay uh, and then uh, coming to the next part here is uh, sl uh, the slider crank mechanism i believe uh, you, you guys are a bit familiar to it but um, we'll talk more on it but i just wanted to show you the some simulations which is which it runs so just looking at this model here uh, there is actually one two let's consider it as uh, three parts and uh, and this is just running a simulation, just showing you the translatory motion and the rotatory motions. So generally, uh, when you look at uh, when you take an engine, uh, there's a lot of things which you, which which goes on. You see this uh, circulatory motion of this. Okay, uh, I'll just finish the simulation and give you a better an example. And the reason why I'm talking about translation and rotatory motion so uh, we'll try to so in this case when you see there are two things either going on we, we are actually converting the translatory motion the translation motion into a rotatory motion a translatory motion into a rotating motion or you could actually say that let's say this part is actually connected to some other thing where I, and the rotatory motion is converting it into a translatory motion so uh, this is these are some basic stuff. So uh, I'll actually go to a video back just to give you a better understanding. So uh, this was one video which we were seeing here. Okay. So the reason why I, I was talking about this was this one here. So you have this. We have the flywheel here, which is rotating the crankshaft. So uh, just, uh, I believe most of you are aware of the components, but uh, just uh, if you are not used to it, that's not a problem, but I'm, uh, there's something which would, the flywheel, which would rotate the part in the bottom, which we call as crankshaft. So looking here, you see this flywheel is actually rotating this crankshaft assembly. All the all these assembly which is crankshaft. So a rotatory motion here is converted to a translatory motion on the piston. So when you look at that, this rotatory motion is trying to con is converted into translatory motion. When you look at piston here, you have this piston assembly. The piston will just move uh, in a translatory motion, and uh, flywheel is what it converts. Uh, so this part is actually rotating and it was just converted into translatory motion. So that's one thing I want to show here. Uh, so that is similar to what we are trying to see here. So a rotatory motion is converted into a translatory motion or a translatory motion is converted into rotatory motion. So uh, we once we get used to all these boundary conditions and giving all these types of uh, joint or rotations to it, 
uh, we'll go to more complex parts. So any any questions till now, guys? Yes, if you have questions, uh, you can ask in the chat box or uh, uh, say no, so that uh, we can move forward. Okay, Spin, you can go ahead. Okay. So uh, uh, this is one thing, and now again, we just saw the slide crank mechanism where we're just trying to do some uh, translatory, rotatory motions, uh, and vice versa. Coming now, uh, I, I show, showed you the video of uh, the uh, uh, the engine uh, where the rotatory motion, the flywheel, is converted into translatory motion in a piston. So similar to that, we are trying to do. Uh, we are trying to take a similar approach here. So looking at the model. So on on here, uh, actually, I will show you. Okay, uh, you you actually are not able to see the uh, uh, the part be below it uh, behind it. But uh, as I uh, run the simulations, you will know it. But here, right now, uh, you could see that uh, this part, this shaft is actually rotating. And down here, it's actually translating. So just consider this as what, uh, as what we saw uh, a few, few minutes back on the video, where a, let's say this uh, you have a flywheel here. And just consider this as the crankshaft, which is rotating. and Rotatory motion is converted into translatory motion of this piston. So you would actually have this uh, piston type assembly here. So uh, these are some models which would give you a better understanding on uh, doing this uh, simulations of uh, a piston with cam. So I just I hit the body so that you can see. So here, just consider this as a piston which is having a translatory motion and just consider this as the flywheel or the crankshaft which has a rotatory motion so a rotatory motion getting converted into a translatory motion or you could take it in a different way so this is something which you would uh, uh, see and as, as we go on as i said you uh and this has a, 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 a option called the contact analysis so it will help us understand what are the point of contact uh, with one part to another? So this is what it is running, and uh, and what we would actually see is like you, you would actually see deformation going on on a part, and again there's a lot of uh, stresses which a part can uh, uh, undergo. So once you get used to how uh, the boundary conditions work, we would start looking more onto the stress developed, uh, the deformation, the contacts on it. Uh, and when, uh, to, to know when a part would fail or not. So that, that's, that's the whole part of uh, what we would do during this course. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, that's the one I had for uh, this slide. And now coming to, coming to more complexity. So uh, uh, we started with stress concentration. Let's considering that a plate, just a plate with a hole. And as we go on, we, we could see the complexity of the of the analysis we do would increase. And right now we are uh, up to a, a component in our engine, which is what we were, I was showing in the video. So you have this crankshaft and you have this con rod on it, uh, and which is actually assembled to the piston. And this is the, Piston still ahead. So right now here is like uh, by the by the by the time we run the simulation, you would have a better understanding of all the motions a part would undergo. undergo. Right now here we are trying to understand the heat generated between the piston and the cylinder. So you have this piston here, and you have a cylinder. So we we aren't uh, seeing much about the crankshaft or the contact here. We are trying to understand. How, how a part which is in contact, so you have the cylinder which is on the outer side and you have the piston here. So as that, uh, so you could see this rotating motion is get, getting converted into translating motion. 
So as the as since there's contact with the cylinder head, you could see there is definitely stress developed. And as you go on, you could see uh, in this simulation, we are actually trying to see the temperature difference we have, like what's the heat generated uh, during these times. So, so right now, what we would actually do is like, we'll try to uh, run the simulations like, uh, so just look at uh, the crankshaft here. Uh, we would actually try to simulate what actually goes on the engine, like how speed an engine would rotate. Uh, so uh, the the speed, engine speed, based on that, we would try to uh, give some speed to it and uh, we'll run the simulation. So just have a look at this uh, uh, crankshaft. You could see how speed uh, we could do. So, so we can actually define the rotative motion, I mean the speed of this during analysis and looking more closely on it now looking at the piston you could see that uh, as it rotates you could see the color difference uh, we'll talk more on it but uh, that's the stress developed actually so uh, or the temperature difference you see so just take a look at the cylinder here so you would see a change in the temperature profile so now just looking at in uh, the cylinder you could see what what's actually going on so as there's a rotation there's some heat developed but when there's a stop you could see uh the heat generation going on so here we are uh, right now looking at the piston so the, the these are uh how complex uh how complex uh simulations we we we, we do during our courses so uh uh, that's what I had for here. And coming to the next one, uh, impact analysis. So uh, just to make it a more interesting factor, I just thought of uh, showing you something like uh, a bowling example. So uh, either you would have played it or at least you would have seen or heard about it. So just to make so uh, make this course a bit interesting i thought uh, i can i'll run the simulation so here in, in this case uh you have seen the heading here it's the impact analysis with what you're doing it's just like uh there's some impact which this ball would go on these pins and uh, when you look at bowling you know that one of these pins are gonna fly based on on the force the impact the ball it's on the pins so that's something which I'm, uh, which I'll be showing you in few seconds. But uh, impact analysis as a whole, uh, just thinking in a mechanical standpoint, you can actually run a crash analysis. Just uh, uh, taking car uh, and just uh, run on it. So uh, that's that's how we could, uh, as a mechanical engineer, we could do. But to make things interesting, I thought I, I'll just show you some simulations. Uh, using bowling. So here, as I said, you like we are trying to uh, give some impact to the pin, and you can see that force by which it hits. You can see the pins which are flying. So uh, this is one simulation. I I, I definitely enjoyed uh, running running the simulation. I I hope you guys would enjoy. But uh, we'll definitely uh, try to run uh, things uh, which is something interesting. And uh, when you come to your project stuff, so this is what we would generally do in class. We can take more uh, other parts, other uh, analysis, impact analysis too. But uh, one of your project would be some something like uh, uh, due to the restriction we have with the spin software, uh, answer sim spin software. There is uh, it's it's not that all complex uh, part. Uh, can be analyzed with the student software. So that's one uh, uh, restriction we have. But we make sure that uh, uh, you guys can do some crash analysis, just taking uh, a, a, a car crash uh, simulations, uh, run into it, and just get you a better understanding of this impact analysis. So uh, this is what I, I, ha I have for this course. So. Uh, uh, as I said, you 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 would generally enjoy doing it. So uh, you, you generally start with the basics, help you out, uh, get you so familiarized with the ANSYS uh, software, like the options available, 
and then we would run try to run more complex simulations and uh, uh, you would definitely uh, end up uh, being a good uh, uh, ANSYS uh, uh, expert. So uh, that's what I had for today, guys. Uh, any other questions you had? Uh, Surya, do you have uh, anything to talk about? Uh, uh, is, is anything else uh, you're expecting uh, from this course, guys? Uh, you, can, you can let us know. Yeah, guys. So, hey, thanks, uh, Sibin, uh, for that. Uh, so, it was a helpful introduction. Uh, I think the guys would have enjoyed as well. Guys, if you have any particular questions, feel free to uh, ask out here. And uh, certain things, I, I, while I wanted to show you certain things, uh, so, um, I wanted to also stress upon a few aspects of it. So, while Sibin showed all these simulations, uh, one thing that Sibin will be looking into is also the theoretical part of all the simulations before diving into any kind of analysis. So before we dive into any kind of uh, analysis on, um, say, uh, thermal analysis or, uh, or kind of nonlinear contacts, you will be looking into uh, things like how FEA kind of affects it. What is the, uh, what is the formula that you need to know in order to solve them. So those are the theoretical background that uh, you will be learning in the initial part of the class. Uh, like every class is one and a half hours long uh, and uh, the first 20 minutes or 15 minutes will uh, kind of look into the theoretical part of it and the next uh, one and a half hours, uh, one hour will look into uh, the simulation part of it and the next 15 minutes will be in, uh, so in the next 50, 